Researchers are offering a reality check on the bottled water you pick up at the grocery store. It turns out a standard size bottle can contain up to 100 times more plastic particles than previously thought. A new study published by scientists at Rutgers and Columbia University found one liter of water contained some 240,000 tiny plastic fragments. They're known as nanoplastics, which researchers say could be even more dangerous than the microplastics found virtually everywhere. I recently asked the co-author of the study, Dr. Phoebe Stapleton of Rutgers University, what that means for your health. Dr. Stapleton, it's great to have you on the show. Let me just start with the basics here because these findings are pretty significant. What specifically did you find uh, on average with these nanoplastics when looking at uh, water? Yes, yeah, so previous studies had looked at micro size plastics in bottled water, and we uh, were able to take one step further with this technology to look at nano sized plastics as well. They're about a thousand times smaller than the micro sized plastics. We were able to confirm the micro sized plastic findings, but also identify about a quarter of a million on average nano sized plastics within a liter of bottled water. So is this new, meaning did we know that nanoplastics existed before? Because, of course, we've um, had research for years about the microplastics in water. So we, as scientists, kind of, I guess, had that gut feeling or knew that they should be there. But having the tools and the methodology to be able to not only quantify them, but identify the chemistry of what type of particles was there was new because, of course, they're invisible. You can't see them in the air. You can't see them in the water. In one, it was pretty clear that it's likely coming from the packaging itself, the bottle or the capping, that process of it. But from the other two, the greatest percentage was not that type of plastic. So it was either coming, we theorize, may have been in the filtering process of the water or, as you say, from the source water itself. You all didn't list those brands of water that you tested. I'm guessing that's for a reason. But for those who do drink bottled water, and, and there's virtually none among us who haven't at one point, um, what are the health implications, if any, that we should be concerned about? So you're right. We didn't list the, the uh, types of water that it was or the brands, uh, but they were commercially available products. And the health effects are still under investigation. Uh, we know that these nano-sized plastics are of greater concern because they're able to breach biological barriers. They're able to get through the GI system. They're able to get through the lung as well and um, translocate or move to other tissues in the body. And then the question that we have in our laboratory in particular is what are those effects once those nano-sized plastics get to those other tissues like the liver or in our particular case, the placenta. So not that this is your place to say, but what should be done with this information, both from the consumer side and then also, you know, for folks who are in the policymaking position? Yeah, so this work is really landing in that awareness category because like we talked about at the beginning, it's something that you can't see, but now we can confirm that they are indeed there. So I think bottled water definitely has its place if the water that is in a community isn't safe for lead, for example, or a natural disaster, then we need to rely on bottled water in those cases. I think if you have the chance to reduce plastic intake, since we don't know what the health effects are yet, I think that's a good decision. So reducing bottled water use not only reduces the chance of this ingestion, but also reduces that single use risk as well. I think at the moment we're just ahead of the game for policymakers and regulation that we, we know that they're there and I'm not sure it's wise to wait for all of the health effects before we start to wonder if they should be there. It's good advice, no doubt. Dr. Phoebe Stapleton is a professor of pharmacology and toxicology at Rutgers University. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having me.